Hey Masters, I want to welcome you to another episode of Path to Mastery. And as always, you know, I'm bringing you the best of the best. Guys, we have Tom Hopkins with us. What? This guy's like the original real estate trainer. He sold 365 houses in one year. I mean, he's just killing it. And this is, this is not with this, like this whole team of people. It's just him and some assistants. He's got 19 books on sales. He's got one of the best books on selling real estate, how to master the art of selling real estate. I mean, the guy's just brilliant. And he's going to share some awesome techniques and strategies with us on not just communication and vocabulary, but how to overcome objections, how to get on the, on the other side of the table with the person. He's just like a master of scripts and objections. He's going to bring us through a four-step process he has of bringing people from creating an agreement all the way to how to, in their mind, my friends, and it has to be in their mind, not ours, rationalizing, uh, actually spending the money, actually hiring us. So it's, it's brilliant, awesome. I just want to really quickly say too, I, I just want to appreciate everybody that listens to this podcast. I know in the realm of podcasting, it's, you know, we're not at quite Tim Ferriss uh, status or James Eltzer status yet. But guys, you know, it's only my 50th episode and I'm just so humbled that you guys would follow us and share it. And, you know, we're always looking to bring better and better, uh, the best of the best guests. I shouldn't say better. So I'd love to hear from you, too. Uh, who else you're looking for me to interview? We've got some really, really cool people. We've got Jarek Robbins coming up. We've got Toby Salgado. I mean, just it's just we're super excited, guys. Hey, appreciate you. If we warrant it, please subscribe. I just go to iTunes, subscribe, share it. Oh, last thing, and I, I and that's it, is uh, Tom Hopkins has an event going on in Honolulu, Hawaii, March 10th and 11th. If you're interested, you can get $250 off your ticket just by mentioning Path to Mastery or go to his site, tomhopkins.com forward slash path to mastery. I believe hotels are only like $230 a night, guys, in, in Honolulu, Hawaii. So not sure I'm going to be able to make that on the short notice. But you know what? If I could, I'd, I'd be out there 100%. So if you want to take advantage of that, awesome. Hey, enjoy the interview. Tom kills it on your path to sales mastery. Hey, Masters, it's David Hill here with another episode for you of Path to Mastery. And we're bringing you a special treat for my real estate agents. Listen to this, guys. We have Tom Hopkins with us. You guys may know Tom's name. He wrote the book, Mastering the Art of Real Estate, which is is one of the books that I really was introduced to in the beginning of my career. And I mean, this guy, he's been around for a long time. He understands real estate. Um, he's developed some communication skills and he teaches. He's He actually has set some records, as a matter of fact, in real estate that have stood for decades. Um, he's now in the field of training, teaching. Uh, you know, his steps on how to be successful. And Tom has trained over 5 million people in the sales realm. Um, so, hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm good, David. Good to be with you and your folks listening and excited to share some money-making ideas. Yeah, man, I'm super excited to have you and thank you. And the other thing I forgot to mention is you, you've you authored over 19 books, including, as I said earlier, um, Mastering the Art of, of Selling Real Estate. And I, I had a, a story on this one. I remember when I first got my license about 12 years ago, I joined a team and they gave me, and uh, do we have CDs 12 years ago, Tom? I think it might have been cassettes, right? I, I can't even yeah, remember. Yeah, it was cassettes 12 years ago. Got it. Okay. I, I was trying to think of that earlier, but okay, so cassettes. And I remember driving around, always listening to these cassettes and you were talking, you were, you were role playing the listing appointment and objection handling and all these awesome things. And I remember that I went on this appointment and at the end of the appointment, the seller had said, well, we really need some time to think about it. And I had said, okay, um, can you tell me what, you know, what it is you need to think about? And they're like, well, really, we, uh, we just we don't want to have a sign in front of the house. And I says, okay. So I said, um, okay, can you, can you tell me more about that? And she's like, well, our neighbors are really nosy. As soon as she said that, Tom, I had said, oh, okay, I, okay, I get it. So you don't want to sign because your neighbors are nosy. So what do you think your neighbor is going to think if they see people coming in and out of your house without the sign? <laughs> and, and, and that's what they did. They laughed and, and, and then I lied and they signed the agreement. And the reason I share that simple story is because I listened to your CDs over and over so many times that when that happened, I didn't even have to think about that. That just popped in my mind. And, you know, David, I got to say that's a highlight in my life today because almost every city I go to do a seminar – 
guys like you come up and go, yeah, 20 years ago, I'll never forget. This person said this and I said that because you said to say this. And so that's really a highlight in my life, teaching really what works with the vocabulary, with the words that you say to people. That's so fun. Yeah, it's amazing. So and in, in I know you teach people that, you know, vocabulary, communication skills. So let's talk about that. So, I mean, when it comes to sales, I mean, obviously communication is the key. I mean, where do we start? When you, let's say you're working with real estate agents. Because one of the biggest challenges we're dealing with right now, frankly, Tom, is, is conversion. There's fewer uh, leads out there and there's more agents uh, calling on these leads. So how do you stand out from some of these other agents? You hit it right on the head. Uh, you have to be better than your competition, which means I think you've done a better job of mastering not only what you say, but how you say what you say to prospective listing pre- people or selling uh, buyers so that you know, you know how to handle everything they say. And, of course, that's one of the things I decided after my fourth year when I sold 365 homes, averaging one a day, I said, I'm going to start writing down what to say for anything that a buyer or seller says. You know, like, say, on a listing, they right away go, you know, but as we get started, Mr. Hopkins, we just want you to know we don't want to list the home for more than 30 days. Well, of course, I'm not going to take a 30-day listing because you have no control of the property, but I'm not going to say that in the beginning. I'm going to say, first of all, our company is very flexible, and let's talk about what we're going to do with the home, and then we'll see what the time should be, and if it's meeting good for both of us, we'll go ahead, and if not, that's fine, too. Does that sound okay to you? Hmm. So essentially, you're not saying no to the person. So what are you doing? Well, what you're doing is stalling it because if I have a great listing presentation, especially if they've had another agent or two come in who has a weak presentation, when I get done covering who we are, what we'll do, what we've done for others and what we're going to do for them, when I get done with that presentation, most people go, well, we really we would love to do business with you. Uh, uh, So what about a 30 day listing? And I'd say, you know, I hate to have you consider that because my company will make me put it at a 30-day price, Mm. which is less than it should be. See, if we put it at a 120-day price, it might sell in 30 days and you'll make more money. So open your minds to not closing it off at 30, but let me have it for 120 and you'll be thrilled that you did. Okay, got it. So essentially, I mean, what you're doing really, Tom, is you're – You're agreeing with, I mean, you're getting on their side of the table, you're agreeing with them and basically saying, okay, this is how I'm going to help you. Am I, am I right? Am I on board or? Oh yeah, definitely. You cannot say no to anything in the beginning or they'll close their minds down. Hmm. And that's why I've always said we're flexible. Let's see after my presentation, how we can handle each of these items. They have to hear who we are, what we'll do, what we'll do for them before we get into any discussion or negotiation. Got it. So so you're definitely creating flexibility, and I get that. So now how do people, like first off, let's say you have an agent that's newer coming into the business. How do they get good at this? Like how do they learn what to say? Like obviously you heard my story driving around, listening to CDs over and over and over. But what would you say? I mean, where do you start? Well, first of all, I, and I hope you'll realize it, David, that I don't need to sell a book. I mean, financially, God has blessed art with a total abundance. But I wrote this book, How to Master the Art of Listing and Selling Real Estate, where I took everything a buyer can say, a seller can say, and I wrote a script. Now, we are in a way like actors and actresses. They have to learn the script or what to say. I mean, if you watch these movies or watch a play, it looks like it's just coming out without thinking about it. Mm. But they have rehearsed for hours. And that's what people in real estate need to do. Uh, In my book, How to Master the Art of Listing and Selling Real Estate, I wrote a script for almost anything that a buyer can say to not give you a check or a seller can say to not give you a 120-day minimum listing. All they have to do is become an actor or actress, rehearse their lines, study, 
and become a student of words and phraseology. I love that. I love, too, that you said, you know, with the book, and I would encourage everybody to go out there and pick up that book. Do you know if it's on Audible by chance, Tom? It's on Amazon, of course. That's the main place. But they can also call my office in Scottsdale, Arizona, and they can order it from one of my customer service reps. Love it. But uh, And, of course, if they do call and order it, I will personalize it to them, autograph it, and write something to them. Because that's one thing I think is important, that if, if you do buy a book, if the author writes your name and something to you, it adds to the to the whole value of the book. So if, if anyone's listening and says, I'm going to get that book, Listing and Selling Real Estate, just call my office in Scottsdale, let Frank, who's my customer service president, let him know that you want it personalized, and I'll write a little note to you, and you'll have that in your library. I always tried to get that done. When back when I used to go and buy a lot of authors' books. Mm. So, so okay. What's the phone number, Tom? Uh, 800 528 Okay, perfect. 800 528 Or it's under Tom Hopkins International in Arizona. All right, we'll add that to the show notes so people will have access to that anyway. And I want to get back to what you said about – you said the, the mastering the art of selling – Real estate is, is essentially a script, right? Um, and you said we need to practice practice our scripts. I know there's a lot of real estate agents, um, and I'm sure you you know going back it was probably the same that that don't really like scripts, right? They say, well, I'm, I'm not really a script person. I don't know if I agree with scripts. So what do you say to those people? Well, you can say what you're saying and not make a lot of money, or you can say what people that make over a hundred thousand a year say. And you can be a six-figure income earner. Which would you prefer? Mm. So when you say say what you're saying, you mean using... Well, in other words, if right now a person is making under 100000 a year of income, net income, closing real estate listings and sales, then obviously they're not a top producer. And obviously that's because they're not saying the right words both on the telephone. When there's an ad call, they need to get that appointment. Or on the live presentation... Because your income is in direct proportion to the words and phraseology you say. Mm. So if you're not making a lot of money, you're not saying the right words. So be smart enough to get a book that has all the right words. And for $29, my Lord, what a small investment to learn every word to say on taking a listing or making a sale. Don't you agree? Yeah, I I agree 100% with you. I'm just just wondering about the other people that don't want to you know, be scripted or, or what about the people that don't want to what, like, let's David, we're all scripted. God, no, I, if I, I said to you, good morning, what would you probably say to me? You might say good morning back to you. I, I get you it. Would. That's a script. If I said, thank you, you'd probably say what? I'd probably say you're welcome. <laughs> That's a script. Yeah, definitely. Everything we say in a way we have learned and it's in our subconscious and it comes out. So in a way, in essence, we're all scripted. The challenge is, is to say, I'm going to be an actor, actress, learn the right scripts. I could do it through repetition. If you hear a phrase for six times, you'll have 62% retention. And all of a sudden, it starts to become you. Gotcha. And, and that's really the goal, to take the words that work and make them yours. And that comes through practice. I mean, through role playing. So, I mean, I, you know, I go as far as having five role play partners and I'm calling him every morning for 15 minutes and practicing the scripts. And we, we have a process or at Keller Williams we call it memorize, internalize, and customize, right? I think what a lot of people want to do, and I don't know, maybe you've gotten that from you, Tom, but a lot of people want to do is uh, start with customize because they just say that doesn't really sound like me. Well, it doesn't sound like you until you make it you. Uh, it's like the, the buyer says, I want to think it over. The, I teach 73 words that you say in a paragraph very nicely. And if you say them properly, you'll usually get them away from I want to think it over, which you cannot really handle, to an objection or an area of concern you can handle, and then you handle it and close the sale. Hmm. So let's talk about that. I'd love to I'd love to go through that one with you because that's probably the most challenging one 
that a lot of us deal with. So when someone says, I want to think it all, why don't you and I will play that. Is, is that okay? All right. Well, I'm going to break it down into parts. Now, of course, I wouldn't do this if I was presenting it, but I want to explain the parts of the I want to think it over close. Gotcha. First of all, you always come across with a an agreement. So you said to me, Tom, I, I think I want to think this over. I would say, oh, David, fine. And obviously you wouldn't take your time thinking this over unless you were somewhat seriously interested. Mm. Is that right? I love that. Now, when you say that, they will say, well, yeah, we are seriously interested. So obviously you're not telling me that to get rid of me. So help me. What do you think it is you really need to think over? Is it the quality of the service that I might render? Now, here again, if you've done a great job thus far, when you say, could it be the quality of the service that I might render? They will then say, well, no, it's not you and it's not that, which that no is in essence a minor yes. Is it maybe something I forgot to cover, David? They go, no, I think you've been very thorough, Tom. So there's another minor yes. Seriously, level with me. Could your hesitation be the financial aspects, the money? And most of the time, I when they say they want to think it over, there's some fear, there's some hesitation because of the financial aspects. In fact, David, level with me. Do you think it's a little more than you want to invest? Yeah. Well, let me let me I'm gonna, let me just I'm gonna stop you there. So you said the first one was an agree, agreement. So are we still on agreement, or did we switch? So no, we switched. Okay. It went from obviously you wouldn't say that unless you were seriously interested. Got it. Okay. So may I assume you'll give it very careful consideration just to clarify my thinking. What phase of this is it that you want to think it over? Is it the quality of the service I'll render? Got it. Now, if you do that and if they like and trust you, they'll say, no, Tom, it's not you. We're very impressed. Then, of course, you throw out, is it something I forgot to cover? Because there may be something they need clarification on, which I want to get out. So now is this is now are we here now kind of figuring out what the objection is? Is that what we're doing now? Second step. We went to agreement to clarification. Clarification. Perfect. I'm actually writing this down. I love it. Okay. (laughs) Clarification. (laughs) First agreement. Yep. And then, of course, you're just going to really kind of humble yourself and say, seriously, level with me. Could it possibly be the money? Because I want them to give me something concrete. I want to think it over as like a ghost. Mm. You can't handle it. Money, I can handle. He says to me, Tom, I think it's a little too expensive. And I always agree, oh, good. Because we want to make this right for you and your family. So level with me. About how much money do you feel it is too much? Let's see what I can do for you. Now I've got off, I want to think it over, into money negotiation, which I can now handle. Mm. Because that's really one of the keys in selling is to take an amount of money and through what you say to them, words, you get them to rationalize spending the money. Hmm. So you took, I want to think it over, which is really just more of a stall and turned it into an objection that now we can handle. Exactly. That is the strategy. I love that. So the first step's agreement, second step's clarification, third step is is what it finding out an amount of money that's holding them back. The amount of money or possibly even whatever the real objection is. Sure. Like say for example, one of my businesses that I work a lot with are uh, swimming pool sales, especially here in Phoenix, Arizona, where it's so hot. And one of the major companies I work with, we teach the folks that they need to, when the buyer looks at you know, a 40000 or $35,000 pool, which is startling today because a swimming pool used to be 15 to 20 max. Now they're 30 to 40 and up. So many people are, we call sticker shock. They hear it's 35000 and they go, my God, I had no idea. But to get everything we want, I think it's just too much. Well, John, we want you to have the pool and make your family happy. So level with me about how much too much do you feel it is? Now we've given them a chance to come up with a third area. How much? He says, well, Tom, I got to say it's about 5,000 too much. Now we must confirm that, David. In other words, the thing holding you, your family, your kids, 
from not only increasing the value of the home with a swimming pool, but having the hours of enjoyment is really only 5,000. Is mm-hmm. that right? He goes, well, I, I guess so. Now I've got it away from, I want to think it over to 5,000. Then, of course, I'm going to help him rationalize 5,000. You know, David, most of the families that we've served over the years with one of our fine pools have committed to once they spend that kind of investment, they're not going to move for 10 years. May I assume that if we give you this wonderful pool for your family, that you'll probably stay in your home 10 years. They'll usually, 80% of the time, say, if we spend that kind of money, we'll probably never move. Well, let's just look at 10 years. See, if we look at that $5,000, that ends up at, with 10 years, 500 a year. Now, if you took a two-week vacation, you and your family would be enjoying that pool 50 weeks a year which that breaks down to $10 a week. And of course, it breaks down to $1.14 a day to have something that's so wonderful for your family. Mm -hmm. For $1.14 a day, should you deny yourself getting this wonderful pool? It's bringing me back now to listening to the cassette tapes. I forget what you called that. It was kind of like breaking it down to- No, it's called the reduction to the ridiculous. Yes, thank you, reduction, exactly. You are listening to One More Sale. You know, I'm going I'm to shift gears a little bit. I want to talk to you about, like, when you're bringing me through this process or bringing the seller or anybody, the client through this process, talk to us about your tonality, your voice inflection, the way you, you're communicating, because um, it's, it's really disarming. Well, and you know what? That's something I also teach. It's not so much only what you say, but how you say it. And I really do have three voices. Uh, I have a voice when I'm up on the stage doing a seminar that's kind of highs and lows and excitement and blah, blah, blah. Then I have a voice if you and I were at a coffee table having a cup of coffee. And then I have a, a, a voice when I'm at the communication table or at the listing or selling table. And again, it's a soft, somewhat gentle I think also matching, and this is so important the folks listening right now realize, you must tune in with whoever you're communicating with. And what that means is I'm going to listen to you, first of all, at the volume of your speech, how loud you speak, and secondly, how fast you speak. Mm. Because, see, there are people that you're going to have at a table that are what we call slow talkers. And they've always disliked fast talkers. So my goal, if I'm with a slow talker, is to slow me down in the beginning for at least about a 90-second period. If you're a fast talker, you're, you're, you're somewhat upset when you get a slow talker. So if I'm with a fast talker, I'll speed up my presentation for the first 90 seconds to match your speed and volume of speech. And this is called tuning in when you're communicating with a person. Let me ask you this, because I know we, we spent a good amount of time on this and we've covered this on a lot of a lot of different episodes. What's the biggest misconception that you hear or you're aware of when it comes to, you know, people doing this, matching people, uh, you know, pay, matching pace, tonality, all that? Well, I know that most of the great people that I've ever heard, uh, one of my students uh, when he was 21 years of age uh, was a guy named Tony Robbins. And he was just a kid thinking of going into seminars. I watched him take this training. And if you listen and watch him, he will mirror. He calls it mirroring, where when he's communicating with a person in a live presentation, he mirrors them almost physically how they're sitting, watching their facial expressions, listening to the volume and speed of their speech. So this, again, is not something that's just for me. It's the people that I, I have found that become great communicators. Mm. Yeah, I, I think a lot of agents, they're so focused on their own perception of authenticity that they never will adapt any of these things that work. Like you said earlier, if you want to make $100,000, you know, why aren't you, right? And frankly, some people probably don't want to. They may write that down in their mind and not doing the things that will actually lead them to get there. Well, the average salesperson, the main motivation of the seven motivators of a human being is money. 
they didn't go into commission selling to not make a lot of money. They went in with taking a risk, giving up a security of a paycheck on a normal job. And most people won't do that unless they have the goal of making two to three times what the average income would be in their uh, area, their uh, part of the country. And I have some of my students make over seven figures today. Right. So we're talking about your students now. We're talking. I'm talking about the averages of the agents out there. So why aren't they doing that? Because like you said, they're going into this industry. They want to double, triple their incomes, uh, but very uh, few of them actually do it. So what gets in the way? Well, they haven't become students of the trade. You see, if I decided I wanted to be a professional golfer, I couldn't go to an average golfer and become a pro with him because he can't teach me anything he doesn't know. So I would need a Butch Harmon. Of course, Tiger Woods and these folks rely on these professionals to teach them how to make a lot of money. And that's one of the things I think people in sales have to realize. You'll not make a lot of money listening to someone who makes no money. You have to surround yourself and learn from those who have accomplished what you want to accomplish. Why recreate the wheel when many of us have already created the wheel? Just put it on your car and go for it. Yeah. So right now in this market, Tom, and I know you got to get going in a few, inventory is really low. There's a lot more agents in the business. What would you say to the agents right now that are kind of struggling? Well, I think you need to, again, find a, a mentors that you want to learn from, become a student of the art form of selling, realizing there are seven fundamentals, just like in the game of golf. There's four fundamentals, golf, grip, alignment, stance, and posture. And if you're going to turn pro, you must find a pro to help you master the four fundamentals. Well, there's seven fundamentals of selling anything. And if you're going to turn pro, you take those seven fundamentals, you master them, you learn them, you have tremendous high quality activity every day, you build momentum. Then, of course, after momentum with productivity, you get referrals. And then after a while, a reputation in the community as a real estate pro. Then all of a sudden, friends and relatives help you build the business with referrals. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you make a lot of money. And you start investing in property because the real wealth is not selling real estate, it's owning it. And then all of a sudden, bingo, one day you are a multimillionaire and people go, how'd you do it? Oh, I just followed the advice of successful people. Yeah, absolutely. Based on what you know today, Tom, I mean, 365 homes in a year, you know, based on what you know today, I mean, you know, going back to when you first got licensed or in the beginning, what would you have done different? Well, I made a mistake in the beginning because I didn't research the real estate company I went to work for. And I went to work for a company. My dad had a friend and this guy was the owner, but he was not a great leader. I think your success comes from following great leaders. Like, you know, Keller Williams is an example. I've trained so many of the Keller Williams people over the years And there's an example of getting in the right environment. See, many, many people go into real estate and they might try to find a place that gives a higher commission. Well, 100 percent of nothing is not as good as 50 percent of something. So I have always felt find a superior supervisor, leader, manager. And I think real estate agents need to interview a company as much as the company interviews them. And if you go into an office that is full, that's one thing. Go to a company that is full and looking for people to replace people. If you go into an office, there's 18 desks and three people. They are not a good company. Then, of course, you interview the manager. You ask the manager a lot of questions. Then, of course, you ask to talk to their talk to their top producer. The top producer in an office will tell you a lot about the company. Mm. And finding the right company. I almost failed in real estate because I didn't have this happen. And luckily, a guy came into my office. I was 22 years of age and almost broke. And he drove in in a brand new car and he had beautiful clothes. And I was riding a motorcycle. I didn't even own a dang car. And he came in. Jim Lawhorn was his name. And, you know, he gave me his business card. He was in real estate. And I said, look at your beautiful car, your beautiful clothes. How do you do it? 
And he said, Tom, have you had any training? I says, no, I, 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 I don't think so. I mean, no. He goes, you've got to find a company that has a good training program because don't learn selling real estate or listing real estate through experience. It's too expensive. Mm. There's too many top producers. And that's what happened to me. I got this advice and I found the number one listing agent in all of California. She was right there in, in my area. And I went to her. I said, her name was Rose Lane. I said, Mrs. Lane, I'm Tom Hopkins. I'm 19. I'm almost broke. I want to make money in real estate. Can I go with you on a listing appointment? And she was very gracious. She said, yes. I went on that listing appointment and it was an art. The way she handled these people, the way she got a 180 day listing, the way she got them down 10% below what they wanted, mm. all with the way she handled them, what she said to them. So I started copying people, find people making lots of money and copy them. Don't listen to the people not making any money. If they were not making a lot of money, they don't know what they're doing. Does yeah. that make any sense? Makes a lot of sense. Hey, what uh, question didn't I ask you that I probably should have asked you? Well, what do you see for 2017? Got it. So what do you see for 2017? Well, based on the political situation, based on all that's happened, I think we've had a holding back for the last six months of people afraid to make a buying decision, afraid to sell. They're waiting to see who's going to be president. They're waiting to see all of this nonsense work out. And I really think we're going to have a wonderful explosive year. But I also feel top producers are going to outwork everybody. And that's another key. You have to realize it's it's not the listings and sales. It's how many people you talk to every day, how many contacts you make, how much prospecting do you do, how many thank you notes do you send, how many follow-ups do you have. It's, it's really a great year to turn pro for those that are new. Just find a pro and copy them and you will make a lot of money. Love it, my friend. So Tom Hopkins prediction for 2017. Once everybody figures out what's going on, they're going to jump on the bus, right? Uh, so let me ask you this final question, my friend. You know, our podcast is called Path to Mastery. So what's the one thing you want our listeners to take from this interview on their path to sales mastery? Become a student of the art form of selling by finding people that you can copy and then put in the hours of commitment. I think it takes two years of fanatical activity to end up with the rest of your real estate career with high productivity. Mm. Sounds to me like finding the right people and finding the right mentors and all that is, is the key to success as far as you're concerned, Tom. I just want to say I appreciate your time. How do our listeners get in touch with you and what do you got going on that we should know about? Well, I, I'm excited, very excited, David. I'm having my, my um, two-day high-intensity uh, workshop weekend in Hawaii, March 11, 10th and 11th. And a lot of people have never been to Hawaii. And we, this gives them a chance to go to Hawaii and let the government pay a major portion of it because it's tax deductible as an educational experience. Mm. So I'd love to have some folks join me in March in Hawaii for two days. It's a Saturday, Friday and Saturday in uh, Honolulu. And then, of course, if we have our uh, training here constantly and they can go to my website, TomHopkins.com. My new book, When Buyers Say No is doing so well and maybe they'd like to get a copy of that if they call in at the 800 number i'll uh, personalize the book to them which we do if they call and say my name is would tom please autograph the book to me that adds a little bit to it so that's what i would suggest come see me in march in hawaii and get one of my books especially how to master the art of listing and selling real estate and become a student of the words phraseology, and close more sales and list more properties. All right. That's awesome. And also, what about my listeners? Anything special we can do for my listeners if, uh, if we get them to, to register for the event? I think if they were to call and say, I was on David Hill's show or listen to Tom on David Hill's show, I'll call my office and say, let's give them a little special break because of them being a follower of David's. Love it, my friend. Okay, awesome. I'm going to put that out there. 
And uh, let's see what we can do about helping you fill this event up. Oh, that'd be super, David. Sure enjoyed our time. All the best. Let's make it a great year. If you're anything like me and you love podcasts, I guarantee you're going to love audiobooks. And audible.com is the largest resource of audiobooks. I'm super excited about my partnership with audible.com where I can offer you a free audiobook. All you have to do is simply go to www.davidsfreebook.com and sign up and you get yourself a free book. Yes, absolutely free, never charged, no membership. If you love the service, then obviously continue using it, but this is completely free. Again, www.davidsfreebook.com. Get yourself a free audiobook and enjoy. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of The Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.